Hey, what's going on, guys? In this video, we're going to be scraping medicines from from easy farm easy dot in, which is the in Indian site with some sort of a different medicines. I've picked up this personal care products here, and uh, just to bear in mind that this video is inspired by one of the subscribers of this channel. So, A B, if you're watching this video, man, this is for you personally. So, have fun, like learn this stuff, and and so on. So. Uh, just like the uh, OLX, uh, the Indian version of OLX that I've been scraping recently, uh, this site uh, fetches the data from the API, so it's kind of infinite scroll here. So just uh, another thing to consider actually API scraping compared to uh, the regular uh, web scraping using the CSS or XPath selector. So if I just quickly invoke my developer tools here, just go into the network tab and just try to scroll the page down. Here in the network tab it appears this get uh, category product and if you have a look at the response we see that here we have our data with all the reasonable uh, uh, stuff here, so like name uh, manufacturer and uh, product attributes so all, all the stuff basically uh, also images are available so uh, everything we could have ever need uh, basically for all, all the products like up to 20 here so we'll be using this API to fetch our data and to store this to CSV and uh, okay so yeah, so probably, uh, uh, okay, one last uh, thing to show you. So if we just have a look mm, at this URL here and we just paste it in. Well, this is the page number three, but it doesn't matter. So it returns us a plain JSON response that we would be parsing later on. So just to kind of bearing that in mind. Okay, so if you're interested, let's actually start writing some code. So here in the current working directory, I've created the file called parmeasy.py and we'll be using Python scrapey framework. Uh, in order to write this little scraper. So let's basically start first. We need to import scrapey itself and then from scrapey.crawler import crawler process. Uh, okay, it's spelled like this. And also we need to import JSON to being able to parse the JSON response and also the CSV module to uh, actually uh, store the results to the CSV file. Of course, we could have make use of the standard built-in Python, uh, uh, built-in scrapey uh, uh, items output to CSV, but that's a little bit more complicated just to play uh, CSVs append in the CSV file. So we'll be using this one in this tutorial. So now let's draft a class that would be called farm easy and it would inherit from scrapey.spider which is the general purpose uh, spider also don't forget to specify your name otherwise it wouldn't work so let's specify farm easy here and before actually proceeding with the class method definitions uh, I just want to uh, say like uh, run scraper and here we need to create a process which would be the instance of the crow process and also say process dot crow and pass the our form easy uh, spider as a parameter so form easy here like this and also don't forget process dot start in order to evoke the crawling process basically so let's basically uh, open the terminal in the current working directory we now are at and simply say Python three and farm easy.py and run just to make sure everything works okay so this is kind of it and now uh, uh, the second thing to consider here so let's basically specify our URL we're supposed to uh, extract our data from well at least this would be the base URL so let's basically call it base URL instead and uh, we don't need to specify the page it's just enough like this. So we'll be uh, creating the page, uh, we'll be appending the page number dynamically uh, within the loop. Okay, also we need to specify the headers because uh, if you have a look at the robots.txt file uh, over here, let me just duplicate this stuff. So uh, it's basically a, a always a good idea to check out the robots.txt file. 
So we're supposed to scrape the API uh, endpoint, which has got another load. So uh, we'll need to uh, specify the uh, user agent in order to trigger this API. So just bypass this sort of uh, and, and the scraping matter basically. So uh, in order to get the user agent, we can go down here and we can see simply like with the request hitters, request hitters and the user agent this one so i will take uh which uh, relates to my browser you can use your own doesn't matter really or you can use mine as well so uh here we specify the user agent and okay so just don't even need that basically just like this is enough so don't forget to quote this because this is python dictionary format so quite important to quote all this all these guys okay and now uh, let's let's define the method that is called a start request which is to scrape a specific method it invokes uh, when the spider uh, instance has been created so it would take only self instance and that's kind of it so uh, here let's create the uh, next page okay so for now on probably Okay, we'll create next page URL to crawl all the pages we need just a little later, later on. So first, let's simply yield scrapey, uh, scrapey dot request and the URL would be equal to self dot. Uh, okay, let's actually create this next page. So here we'll be saying like next page is equal to self dot base url plus and well let's stringify zero so we will be covering actually the very first page so uh, let's actually first try to check that out so just print the next page here to make sure it kind of works okay uh okay so here it is don't don't have a look don't look at this error this is because we didn't make any requests scrape it doesn't like it so just throw in some errors but what we need here actually is this for me the api blah 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 page zero so this is kind of it okay so as far as the next page is pretty fine we can already yield this request and so the url is specified also specify the headers that would be equal self dot hitters and also we'll need the callback function because bearing in mind that scrape is doing requests http get requests in our case asynchronously so that's why uh, we need to specify the callback function we'll use the self dot parse which we didn't create yet but we'll do this just right in a moment so dev parse would take two arguments the self instance and the response itself and let's actually try to print the response object just to make sure that we got the HTTP status, status code uh, maybe just rest.status like this and call this status so this should have returned us the, the number of 200s which means that the request uh, has been done successfully otherwise uh, we'll need to add some more logic okay so I hold my breath uh, and try to run this again and let's have a look uh, okay error okay for me it has no attribute next page okay not the self next page sorry like this okay just the regular next page and that's it okay so uh okay so here it is so uh, the uh, the status is okay so here is here we get our status that means that we just retrieved this sort of data uh, within our uh, from within our scraper and now just to, in order to avoid torturing uh, the target site while debugging our spider we actually uh, uh, want to store this response to the false so it's generally a good practice so, uh, during the debugging process don't make this request all the time just store this to the file once and then just create the data extraction logic and when it works pretty well then you can just uh, enable this back again then crawl the pages and store to csv and you're done so here we can simply say with open uh, response.json because this time we'll be storing the json file 
find the right bytes as JSON file here. And here uh, we can simply say JSON file dot write and we're writing uh, response dot text like this. And if I run this again, here should appear a new JSON file. So let's have a look at this. Okay, we got our JSON file, which is pretty nice. So from now on, we don't uh, need uh, this stuff to happen. So just command the crawling process for a while. Uh, don't also need this request for now. And now we want basically to read the file that we've just created. Also, let's uh, let's create a variable called data, which first would be the type of Python string, but later on it would uh, convert it to Python dictionary. Here we can simply say for line in uh, JSON uh, JSON file dot read and here we want data plus equals and our line here. So now we can simply print our data and also here don't so I just specify so debug data extraction extraction and here we can simply say farm easy uh, farm easy dot parse and we need just to fake so well, the first argument is the self instance so this self so that's why we're providing the self instance here and also let's fake the response object because we don't really have any response in the bone just so just the plain string to fake this stuff Okay, and now we run this again and hope to see the response. Okay, so here is our response, but now it's uh, been taken from this res.json file, not from the URL, uh, not from the HTTP request. Okay, so uh, now uh, the next thing to consider basically, now we need to convert uh, this sort of data to uh, the Python dictionary format. In order to do that, we need to simply to say json.loads and we're specifying our data here. So one more time. So now it's the JSON object. And now just to pretty print this a little bit more, we can simply say json.dumps and this data and specify the indentation equals to two spaces. And we got a pretty printed version of our API response here. But of course, it's really difficult to basically step through over this and trying to understand what exactly we need. That's why using uh, Chrome Developer Tools is far easier way uh, of doing things. So we just go to back to this preview stuff. So what are we kind of supposed to use here? So we need, uh, so basically, so it, what it got, uh, what it got. So it has the data and the products. So we need to loop over all the products uh, within the data key here. So let's basically uh, try to do, do try and doing this. So uh, here I can simply say for uh, product in uh, data, and I'm using the data key and uh, this product. So oh, products, okay, products, and we just want to print. Well, let's say product. Uh, Product. Okay, so let's start with product ID base. Oh, product name. Product name is fine as well. So product name, just to make sure that we're looping over the right uh, data set. Okay, seems like it is. So from now on, we can basically start our extraction logic. So here is here I specify the data extraction logic here. Okay, so. Now let's have a look what data in particular do we need here basically. So we need, so this name, uh, aloe vera IMF cream 50 milligrams. So this is supposed to be a name. Okay, so let's basically pick up one of the products. So the name, okay, now let's start basically creating our uh, items extractor here. So I can simply say items which creating the variable items which would be the type of Python dictionary. And here I specify the name, and this would be the product and the name here. And at the very end, we simply want to print json.dumps 
and here uh, we specify our items that being extracted out of the API response. So indentation equals to two spaces. Okay, and let's try this one more time. Okay, so now we got all in the name extracted. Okay, mm, the, the next thing to consider, we are not sure what is this slug all about, but let's just have it, let's just have this slug as well. So I can simply say like slug and here we specify product and the slug itself okay so let's oops let's try to have a look now okay now we have the slag being added as well okay later on so manufacturer okay manufacturer is also cool thing to consider so manufacturer would be product and the key here and it's better to simply copy paste this stuff okay so just copy and paste and run okay now we got a manufacturer okay what else so uh mrp decimal what is this uh what is this all about okay guys just hold on a sec i need to understand what this data regards to okay so probably this mrp decimal is the this price that was before and uh, the actual price shouldn't be should be the sale price decimal also uh, it calculates some sort of uh, a percentage of of the discount but we, per, we basically would make use only of this sale price decimal so let me just quickly grab this guy so just copy here and here we can simply say like uh, I'll, let's make it just call this a price and this would be the product and this sale price decimal okay so let's try to one, run this one more time okay so here we get our prices which is brilliant basically and also well i think that uh, uh quite important thing might be using this sort of stuff here so we are looking for uh is available so product availability flags so just copy and here we can simply say uh oh my god let me spell the availability word correct correctly availability uh let me just uh, quickly check this on google translate yeah sorry just spell this slightly wrong so here is according to google translate how it's right way of doing things okay and just one more time uh we need this product availability so just copy and I say product and this stuff and also uh, there is a nested object here so we need to specify that is available uh, we need to retrieve that is available here so just copy this again and saying is available so if I now run this stuff one last time okay so availability is true 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 so if it would be false it would be false respectfully so this is kind of it okay and the very last thing to consider just probably this kind of images so yeah so this is the only here so let's specify the images as well just well i think this is always good to specify the images so i say images uh and this would be product and images basically and this is kind of it okay so let's check this again okay so here we got our images and probably it would be better just uh, so here you see like mm, within the images it uh, returns a list but we want to convert this to, to the plain string and if there will be more than one url we just want to separate them using the comma so in order to do that we can simply say uh, comma dot join and this products and also we can even specify comma plus space here so let's have a look one more time okay so it seems like it seems like this is gonna let's just quickly check that image out so just copy this and go into the oh my god my mouse is going fucking crazy okay and paste okay so seems like seems like this is just fine okay so at this moment we actually did uh, did extract all uh, all this stuff successfully and there is one more thing to consider here so we need now to store this data to the csv file and this is uh, done very easily so 
we need simply to say so here I say store uh, I mean not store maybe just better call it append result uh, results to CSV file and here we simply say with open and we call this let's call this form easy dot CSV and we want to write the file stream as CSV file and here we need to create the writer object so writer would be equal CSV dot writer uh, no dict writer sorry we, we're using the dict writer because uh, it's the dictionary so we're writing the type of Python dictionary so if this was a list of lists uh, in that case we would use just the simple writer but here we'll use the dict writer and it takes the CSV file as the first argument also we need to specify the field names which would be equal to items dot key so we just want to return a list of uh, this keys from from within the items uh, element here items variable and this would serve as a field names for the CSV file so like column names so this is it and just in order to write this file we need oh sorry so it's not the w, w, w but instead a here because we're not writing the file stream we're appending the file stream i'm sorry sorry for this so otherwise it would be overwriting the stuff or all on the way so here we can simply say writer dot write row and we specify our items and this is kind of it so now let's basically uh, kind of try to test if this would actually uh, create a csv file for us okay so here is some sort of a csv file okay but it's not really not really that great so why only one here oh well that's because i'm sorry so around indentation level of course we're, do, we're doing this for each item so let's try this kind of one more time okay and okay so here we got uh all our data so let's uh, also quickly check that out uh with the excel like pro program in my case i'm using LibreOffice and the calc app so let's have a look how the csv is supposed to look like here okay so let's have a look okay so this seems kind of to be just fine and as far as we would be appending the the very the mm, this items from the new pages that would be appended as well and one last thing so at the very beginning when we just uh, started to make this stuff we just want to uh, basically provide the column name so in order to do that we can do the following stuff here so uh, here let's actually try to print uh, items dot keys just in order to avoid typing this stuff by hands also we don't need let's avoid torturing our disk for a while so i just need to grab this kind of stuff so uh this is what we need uh yeah let's grab the entire dictionary basically so just copy this stuff here and let's create uh what is known as uh, a constructor in python so we can simply this is the object oriented programming related term so we can simply say init here it takes the self instance so this kind of method is executed before everything else okay then there goes the start request and so on so here we can simply say with open and here again form easy form easy dot csv and here we definitely want to write the file stream as csv file and csv file dot uh dot write and okay so probably yeah we don't need this don't need don't need this so just just a plain string basically because it's the csv format related stuff okay so just a plain string and also okay get rid of this guy and also at the very end we need to make sure that we have a new line so this is kind of it okay okay but uh this would only work when we run our crawler because otherwise uh, the constructor won't be actually created so we can't really test that 
kind of right now but let's uh, basically uncommand all all the stuff we'll get here so we don't need to debug anymore we need just to uncommand our crawling process and save and also we need being able to yield our response so now we'll make HTTP get request to the particular URL endpoint and fetch the data extract it and try to write to the CSV file so just save and uh, hold my breath and try this one more time okay and now let's go back to this csv file okay great guys so now we have our name slug manufacturer price availability images and then the data goes so this is exactly the exact result we've been expecting for so the very last thing to consider is actually uh to crawl multiple pages which would mimic the infinite scroll uh, infinite scrolling on the page so here we can here we can simply uh, say basically like uh, so let me uh, add a little commentary here so uh, scrape data from infinite scroll okay and here we say four page in range uh, from zero to uh, well let's say to three so uh, here let, let me just add another more commentaries so I just simply say uh, specify page range you would like uh, to scrape data for so if you want to scrape from like kind of more than three pages uh, like 10 or 20 how many there i don't, I don't know that that should have been uh, uh you, you should have found out that yourself so that's kind of exercise for you guys so just specifying here so if uh, so, so, well now it won't uh, actually be three it would be just two so if say you specify like ele uh, like 11 it would scrape basically 10 pages and so on so but I, I will just leave well maybe just let's have four to have actually three pages being scraped and also here we'll stringify the page instead of the zero and well all the all the rest stuff seems to be just pretty nice okay so now i hold my breath and try to run this stuff one last time i hope this is one last time and well it seems like okay we don't need to basically print this keys anymore so uh let's have a look at our form easy okay so it seems like it's being appended the data from multiple pages so let me just quickly check this uh, in the LibreOffice. Okay, not here. Mm, where is the LibreOffice, man? Okay. Uh, no, it's terminal. Oh my god. Okay, here it is. Here is the LibreOffice. Great. So, okay. Okay, so here is our data name slug manufacturer price images availability oh everything is available cool and all this stuff so this is kind of it guys well i hope you learned something interesting out of this tutorial so it's pretty the same from the technical perspective of what we've been doing uh in olx and you know like it's quite a nice thing regarding indian websites that seem like they all uh, allow you to scrape data directly from the api even though it doesn't seem to be that loud, but still this is possible, so this is really nice. So, uh, in the description below this video you will see uh, how to basically make a request for uh, a custom web scraping tutorial on demand. So, if you want, guys, if you want me to create some sort of web scraping tutorial covering uh, the data extraction from the site of your choice please please feel free to make those requests in the commentaries and I would be happy to uh, cover all, all of those stuff when I have time well at least I will be putting uh, those requests into my shuttle so when I have time I will be making those tutorials from time to time so just to help you learn something just try to help you master master python programming and uh, and uh, web scraping and uh, uh, i hope that finally you would become freelancers and start making your start making money while programming basically so that's kind of my goal at this period of time at least so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial i wish you all the best guys learn programming learn web, learn web scraping 
just practice more and you will definitely success and you will definitely succeed so until next time and take care